when people talk about decolonization, a lot of people say that we must discard all these colonial things. Frankly, I don't think you can put a, this is not a car that you put in reverse and sort of pull back. You can't. History has happened. This has already happened. In India, colonization happened. We've got English, whether we like it or not. Now it's very tough to say, oh, we must cancel out English and replace everything with India because then that's also not organic. Then you're also artificially trying to engineer something, which is not possible. Think of it the other way, which is that the English language came here very much as the colonizer's language, very much a language in a sense that they made us speak at the cost of so many other languages. But then what did we do as Indians? We took over that language. We took over it, started arguing nationalism in that language, started arguing anti-British stuff in that language, uh, whether it's Gandhiji writing in English against the British, whether it's even figures like Savarkar, controversial figure, but even he uses English as a weapon to put forth revolutionary ideas or whatever it is. Is it Hindutva who are, who, or, or, you know, who are the Hindus? I think that's the original title. Uh, that, who is a Hindu, sorry. These books were also published in English because they were meant to reach a pan-Indian audience in that language. Uh, railways similarly, everybody knows that the British brought in railways not for Indians' benefit, to move around troops and to move around goods and for their economic interests. That was, that's what they were doing with the railways. But we took over the railways. We started using it for pilgrimages. Gandhiji started traveling in the railways for nationalistic purposes. He would put his head out at every railway station, use it as a political platform to make anti-British speeches. So just because something comes from the outside, doesn't mean that we can't subvert it and make it our own and completely reorient its purpose, which we've done in India. So even though a lot of concepts have come to us from outside, it's not as if we can wipe the slate clean and go back to some pristine version. There is no pristine version. You and I are Malayalis. Malayalam itself has so many words that have come from Portuguese and other Persian and other Indian languages yeah. and foreign languages. You can't dissect the language, remove all the foreign influences and say that you have an original version of the language. Then you've got a very depleted language. And then some people have tried to populate it with Sanskrit or whatever. That's also artificial. These words have come in a natural way through natural human encounters and social encounters. That's just how the world operates. So same with colonization and all of these concepts. They've come in in an aggressive, negative way. But we co-opted them, gave it a positive spin of our choosing and we owned it. And that is where I think that's the healthy way to look at a lot of these things. That we, we can always own things and make it our own and move on from there.